Gladys. Yes, we have in studio the former Deputy Chief Justice, Dr. Nancy Barraza. Thank you for joining us. And tonight we're looking at the legacy that has been left by the former uh, Chief Justice. And in his farewell speech to Kenyans, he expressed confidence that he was leaving behind a judiciary more independent and more humane, one that has defended the Constitution and exponentially expanded access to justice and that had reduced case uh, backlog, including some that have been in the system for over 30 years and one that has invested in massive infrastructure that has unflinchingly fought corruption. This is just a snippet of what he had in the farewell speech. Do you agree with uh, what he says as his legacy? Um, uh, there are things that have happened uh, during um, uh, the former uh, Chief Justice's tenure. Um, and, and, and it is not his um, personal um, effort. I think much of it has to be ascribed to the nature of the Constitution. Okay? The Constitution itself um, placed an obligation on any office holder, be it in the judiciary or any other arm of government, uh, that there are obligations you have to meet. And uh, for the judiciary, um, access to justice was, 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 was topmost, and that included um, expansion of um, um, uh, in infrastructure, de decentralization, um, employment of more judges, and therefore clearing the backlog or, or dealing with backlog. So what so, you're saying in mm, effect is uh, mm. Under any other CJ, this would still have happened. That is the infrastructural change, the increase in courts, the increase in the number of judges, just to ensure that there's no uh, backlog as has been in the years past. I think, yeah, any other chief justice coming after uh, the 2010 constitution, serving under or heading a judiciary after the 2010 constitution, those are the things that were, were, the, that were expected of him or her. And, um, he had an, an advantage in the sense that uh, the judiciary got and it be, became independent uh, with the new constitution. Right. It, it, it was um, assigned more resources as opposed to the previous constitution and um, the, the previous um, uh, judiciary. Uh, for example, the judiciary under the former Chief Justice Gishero never handled any uh, money beyond three billion three billion for an, a, a whole arm of government. So he couldn't do much, but come the Mutunga uh, judiciary, um, it, it, it's now an independent institution uh, with a lot of financial uh, support by virtue of the constitution itself. Right. Um, and, 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 and with a mandate uh, to uh, decentralized courts and expand uh, avenues for access of justice. Right. And so if you, you are handling uh, 26 billion, I think when we, 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 we came in, for the first time, I think we got 16 billion. And then the subsequent years, I think the money has increased. Naturally, those are the things uh, you, you, you are meant to do. Would Otherwise, you read, what would you do with the money? Would you read Dr. William mm. Tunga as having taken credit where it's not quite due to him as a person? Uh, mm, well, partly he's right, but partly I think he also needs uh, to, 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 to thank people who helped him. Uh, he needs to thank the Constitution, and personally I would thank Kenyans for passing the Constitution. It empowered the judiciary and enabled the changes and they enabled the changes that have come something he's been credited for is uh, demystifying the judiciary uh, in your experience uh, is this the case credit or to him i think in fact the strongest and uh, most memorable legacy for uh, former chief justice uh, willie mutunga is that that he, he he humanized the judiciary he did uh, he put a human face to the judiciary he did. Uh, you remember the red scarlet? Yes. He, 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 he demystified the, the red scarlet. You know, the, 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 the red robes and, and, the, and the wigs, and which used to terrify people. Mm. And uh, access to justice is not just physical. It is also mental. And those of us who have practiced in those courts, uh, I think that was one of the barriers right. uh, to accessing justice. So he came in, and, and, and out of sheer... Um, 
uh, moral uh, um, uh, strength uh, that uh, Mutunga had. He, he started uh, off by uh, um, doing away with, 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 with those paraphernalia. Let's that, speak uh, to the institution so. that he has left behind and uh, mm -hmm. during his tenure there's a lot that has been associated to it. Yes, the demystifying of the judiciary, humanizing it, mm -hmm. has been a success, uh, but there has been some association of uh, issues of corruption and also conflict of interest in what we have seen play out, uh, especially latest one in the uh, retirement age uh, uh, fiasco, the back and forth. Of course, there's a position now, and both the CJ and the deputy CJ position has already been adv advertised. What do you, did you make of this particular fiasco? I think um, I think the judges who were involved in the in the in the in the in the, in the argument over the retirement age, in my uh, humble view, I think I think they were a bit dishonest. And especially the, the immediate former uh, deputy chief justice. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you listen to her uh, interview, when she was being interviewed for, for deputy chief justice, she did accept that uh, she's going to go at 70. And plus, if you are sitting in the highest court, you ought to know the constitution better than anybody else. Right. Uh, so you cannot sit there and say, you, you don't know what the Constitution says about the retirement age. I, I think for me, that was very, very unfortunate. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it portrayed the Supreme Court very, very badly. It's like it's holding fellows who can't even interpret the Constitution. Right. Very, very unfortunate. Right. And what uh, mm -hmm. do you say about what it's done to the perception of Kenyans, um, especially now that, of course, the Philip Tunoy, Justice Philip Tunoy Tribunal is uh, ongoing tomorrow. They had been on, uh, uh, they had been on, uh, they had adjourned, but they're back tomorrow. Uh, but the slightest association to issues of corruption, what does this do to the perception of uh, Kenyans and the trust in the judiciary? I think right now the trust of Kenyans in the judiciary is very, very low. And, uh, and if I remember, I think a recent um, poll uh, stated that 60% uh, of uh, 60 Kenyans say they wouldn't go to court. Okay? I think that is very, very, very bad for the judiciary. Uh, corruption, uh, Kenyans wanted a clean judiciary. And so cases uh, or allegations of, of, of corruption. Now the Tunoi case, when it came out and uh, courtesy of the former CJ, he, he, he announced it um, publicly and the affidavit from which it emanated mm -hmm. uh, made it sound like uh, all of them could be corrupt. Uh, you know, it, and, and that has left that suspicion hanging on the entire Supreme Court. Right. I don't know how true it was, but for me, the way it was approached was, was, was unfortunate uh, because uh, people keep asking you now who ate, uh, if, if Justice Tunoi was, was bribed, which is not coming out like mm -hmm. it, it happened, but if he was bribed, he can't have been bribed to, to sway himself he must have been given the 200 million to sway the others. Mm. So that is the, the thing that hangs on, on, the, on the Supreme Court judges now, and, and it is very, very unfortunate. Okay. Would you rate the uh, overall performance and uh, would you say the confidence that Kenyans have in the judiciary? How would you rate them? It's the judiciary, the institution. That the is. judiciary, when we came in um, as the uh, post-2010 uh, judiciary, they, they, the, the, the confidence of Kenyans was very, very high. Uh, but the, the, the persistent accusations of, of, of corruption, then the seeming confusion there, I think it has eroded the, 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 um, the confidence of Kenyans in the, in the institution. Had you been still the deputy CJ, would things have been different in your view? I think some of these things could have been handled differently, like the Tunoi corruption thing. I, I, I believe the CJ could have handled it differently, uh, other than standing uh, well, going public over something which doesn't seem to have been well investigated. Um, somebody else could 
probably have done it differently, right. probably approached uh, Justice Tonoi um, and, and, and alerted him of that. And, and then from there, see how you can deal with it. Uh, you are taking it to JSC, it is going to investigate. And then it takes that natural course without you throwing the entire uh, Supreme Court to, 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 to the dogs. And the had, you, had you still been uh, Deputy CJ, would you have had the aspiration of taking the top office, that is? Absolutely, I would have. I would have. And you remember the Judiciary Transformation Framework, which is the blueprint uh, for the transformation of, 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 of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, the CJ seems to take uh, the entire credit. Um, I, I, I think if, if, we, if we can be honest, uh, that's my brainchild. I, I really worked on it. Um, and, 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 and it is the one which um, opened um, doors for funding. Mm -hmm. Because once people see that you, you have management um, uh, structures in place, that you have financial uh, management, which, wo which was lacking yes. in the previous judiciaries, and that's why they weren't getting much funding. Yes. And there was a World Bank funding for judiciary um, improvement performance, a lot of money, yeah. which uh, the World Bank had withdrawn because we didn't have financial management uh, systems in the judiciary. For clearance of doubt, as we wrap yeah. up, um, mm -hmm. you, you're not bitter that uh, your aspirations for the top uh, office in Supreme Court you're not bitter at all. I'm not bitter. I'm, 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 I'm sad I could not, but um, I, I think I could have contributed. You have. Um, what are your recommendations moving forward? What kind of uh, Chief Justice should we be looking for, uh, having the uh, legacy of Dr. William Mutunga in mind? Dr. Mutunga had strong points. I've said he, he humanized. But Dr. Mutunga, I think if we read J George Kekoro's analysis of Mutunga, I think that is very true. Dr. Mutunga had this big uh, picture. He looked at things, uh, you know, above there. But he wasn't a hands-on man. Um, he, he needed a lot of help. Right. I moved in very handy and did the transformation framework. And when I left, uh, we seemed to have wobbled. Mm -hmm. uh, Gladys Chole moved in and did her bit. And she, 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 she did her work quite a bit. And then after some time is when now we are discovering or allegations of she, she, she did this and that. Where were we mm -hmm. all this time? So issues of financial management, we haven't dealt with them. Uh, the next CJ should be a hands-on person, a person who knows things about um, institutional management, a person who can um, um, implement the transformation framework in, in a better way. Anyone in mind you would buy for? You would buy or vouch to? Uh, for me, I have in mind a person who w must come in and fight corruption. And that is? Corruption, corruption. And the person who comes to mind is Honorable Mother Karua. All right. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Dr. Nancy Baraza, the former uh, 